Hey, good morning everybody. Happy Thursday. Thought I would bring you outside and encourage you to get out and look up at the sky, right? We are looking at patterns today. Things that are patterns happen again and again and again, right? And when we get used to seeing certain patterns, then we can make our own guess of what we think will happen next. And what's really cool about today is we're going to be looking at patterns both in the sky and also in our math lesson. So, every day after the nighttime, we wake up and it's daytime. And at the end of the daytime, it gets dark and becomes nighttime again. And that's called a pattern. And patterns happen again and again. And we know that if it's daytime, nighttime is coming next. And when we go to bed at night, we can guess that when we wake up, it's going to be daytime again. Scientists look for patterns like this all the time in nature. And when they find a pattern, they check to make sure it keeps repeating over and over again. And then they learn that they can expect that same pattern to happen the next time. They use these patterns to predict the future. Now, of course, certain things can change and then the pattern will change as well. But for the most part, patterns of day turning into night and then day again and then night again, that's happened every time since the beginning of the earth, hasn't it? So will you expect to see the sun in the sky tonight? No, you've never ever seen the sun in the nighttime, have you? And so you can make the prediction that since I have never seen the sun in the sky at night, I will not expect to see it again this night, right? So tonight's sky wouldn't be different than any other night you've seen in your whole life. Well, you found a pattern in the day and night sky. You've noticed that sun shows up in the daytime and never at nighttime. And so you can guess from now on, you will never see the sun in the nighttime sky. You're a scientist. You have figured that out. So let's take a look here. A pattern blank itself, right? So patterns do what? They happen again and again. Which word means it happens again? Would you say repeats? If you said a pattern repeats itself, you're exactly right. That's exactly what the word pattern means. Something that repeats over and over again. And once we've learned that it's going to do that again and again, then we can begin to guess what part of the pattern will happen next. So this is in your science workbook. Why don't you take a look, your page looks just like this. At the top it'll say, number two, the nature of science, patterns in the sky. The nature of science is a scientist looks for patterns so that he or she can predict or guess what will happen next if the pattern keeps repeating again and again, right? So your page looks like this, and I will show you this one. All you need to do on your page is circle what will come next, okay? So look at this pattern. Here's a picture of day, here's a picture of night, then day, then night. So which of these in that pattern should be next? If you said day, that would be next in this pattern. Read with me. Day, night, day, night, day. Let's read this pattern, ready? Night, day, night, day. Which of these should be next? Right after the day, the next would be the night. So circle the one that comes next. And then at the bottom of your page, you will just fill in the word day or night that makes sense in each sentence. Read carefully. Day comes after day. No. Day comes after we sleep at night. And night comes after dinner. <laughs> no. Night comes after day. Okay? So you're going to do that, and then this, the next page I want you to look at, it's in your science notebook, and I want you to just take a minute and show me what we've learned. What have you learned about the patterns 
of what we expect to see when we look up at the sky, okay? You've seen it enough times to know what kind of things would you see in the daytime sky. Certainly what's always in the daytime sky and never ever in the nighttime sky. The bright, beautiful sun, right? I'm feeling a lot of it now. It's nice and warm and sunny along me right now. So you would draw a picture of the daytime sky that would definitely include the sun. Would there be anything else in it? What's behind me right now? Look up there. Look up there. What's behind me? Could there be some clouds in the sky? Yeah, you might include that in your picture too, right? Would there be any stars in the sky in the daytime? I would not put any stars in my daytime picture, would you? No, it's always too bright in the daytime to include stars. Could there be a moon in the daytime sky? Not usually, but have we ever seen the moon in the daytime sky? We have sometimes. It's weird, so if you want to include it in that picture, you may. How about the nighttime sky? What's the one thing you would never, never, never see in the nighttime sky? Right? The sun. So that's the only thing you wouldn't put in this picture. You can put anything else you think you would expect to see because as a scientist, you have noticed a pattern of things that show up in the nighttime sky, okay? And speaking of patterns, let's take a look at our math lesson for today. So in math today, we're gonna be looking at patterns made with shapes, all right? It looks like maybe we have had an interruption with our internet here. And so, let's see if we have it now. Yes, we're all set. Okay, so in your math book, you're gonna be looking for page 725. Now remember in the science notebook, I said let's read the pattern and it started day, night, day, night, and then we said what would be next? This is the same thing, read with me. Orange, orange, yellow, orange, orange, yellow, orange, yeah, if you said orange is the next color, you're probably right. But before you think we're finished, take a look because there's another pattern happening. Are you clever enough to notice? This is a cube. Cube. Is that a cube? What's its name? Rectangular prism. Read with me. Cube. Cube. Rectangular prism. Cube. Cube. Rectangular prism, cube, shout it out. Yep, if you said cube, that would be what's missing there. So what did we say before? It was a color word. Read with me. Orange, orange, yellow. Orange, orange, yellow. Orange, yes. So we have just gone through all these steps. First, we understand what a pattern is, right? Otis made this, this pattern of shapes and is trying to see if we can guess what the missing shape would be. We understand what patterns are. So how did we solve that problem? Well, we started reading the pattern, didn't we? First, we noticed the color pattern, orange, orange, yellow, and it repeated, orange, orange, yellow, and it repeated, orange, orange, yellow. And then we noticed there was also a shape pattern, cube, cube, rectangular prism, and it repeated, cube, cube, rectangular prism, and it repeated. So we were able to figure out that the missing shape is this orange cube because orange has to be the next color and cube has to be the type of shape, okay? So what you are going to do on the next couple of pages is exactly the same thing. Here Sophie has made us a color and shape pattern. We need to figure out what is missing at the end of the pattern. Should it be green, blue, or yellow? Should it be a cone, a cylinder, or a cone? Wait, what? What's different about these cones? That's an upside down cone, and that's a right side up cone. Woo, another pattern to check on. Okay, so you have to be detective scientists. You are looking for color patterns, shape patterns, any kind of pattern you can find will be repeating though, right? And that will help you figure out what is the missing shape in the pattern. So it's pattern day. We're doing lots and lots of patterns. For these right here, I would read them and draw something that goes with the story and then write its name. 
this one. Latoya bought a box of tissues. It has eight vertices. Hmm. All of the faces are rectangles. So what does her tissue box look, box look like? Right? And what would it be? Is that a sphere? No. Is that a cone? No. A tissue box has to have a different name, doesn't it? See if you can figure that out. And here Grace made this pattern for us. Again, just figure out the next two shapes that are missing to finish this pattern. And then read which two shapes does she need? Will she need a cube, a cone, or a rectangular prism? How many are you circling? Two, okay? You're finding two answers in that one. And then same type of practice on the homework. And then, wait till you see this. I have this video listed for you on our class story, okay? And it's called Kids Minute to Win It Challenge Games. And Jake and Ty are a this couple of really Tyler. cute little Tyler. boys. And they have made up some fun games that you can play in the house or in the backyard with stuff you'll find right in the house. Little cups, drinking cups, straws, all kinds of fun things for you to try. And if you take a picture of yourself trying even just one of the games, send it to me on the R portfolio and I'm gonna make us a fun video to share with friends. Okay, everybody? Then get yourself a snack or some lunch and come back for students practice. I'll see you soon.